Alicia Causey Nelson, one of the most decorated women's basketball athletes in SWAC history. Dominating the competition in her four years has submitted her name in the SWAC and Alcorn record books. Career leads with 1,000 points, 600 rebounds, 300 assists, 200 steals, and most free throws made. Causey Nelson also attained two regular season championships, first team all-conference from 1994 to 1998, SWAC all-tournament team, SWAC tournament MVP, the E.E. E. Simmons Award 1997 to 1998, most valuable player and best all-around player 1997 to 1998, dominant and record-setting, Miss Alicia Causey Nelson. I feel amazing. It's just an honor for the committee and for people to see the hard work that I put into my craft and, and finally get recognized for it in front of my family, especially my son who now played high school basketball, to see that if you do good and work hard, this is what can happen. I will have to say winning the SWAC back to back because anyone that plays in this conference know how tough it is to win you know, one year, but to win it back-to-back -back season, regular season SWAC champs, I would have to say that is one of my fondest memories of being a student athlete. I would like to thank Commissioner McClellan and the 2021 SWAC Hall of Fame Committee for bestowing me such an honor with this prestigious award. I am very happy. Thank you. Bertram Lavelle, the embodiment of excellence. Lavelle has become the gold standard for track and field athletes and coaches across the nation. Lavelle is a decorated sprinter and earned an All-American and All-SWAC award. He is also a former Olympian and was a member of the Trinidad and Tobago 4x400 relay team in 1972 Summer Olympics held in Munich, Germany. Lavelle also earned a bronze medal for his participation in the Caribbean Games hosted in Venezuela. Lavelle's career as a coach may be considered even more impressive. Graduating from Grambling State in 1977, Lavelle went on and is currently the head track and field coach for his alma mater, collecting 36 conference titles along with 36 Coach of the Year awards. Winning and excellence, Mr. Bertram Lavelle. Giving all glory unto God, our Savior and Jesus Christ, who is, I feel very honored to be a, become a member of the SWAC Hall of Fame. Uh, it's once in a lifetime achievement that everyone is not able to accomplish. So again, I feel blessed. One of my biggest highlights is being a member of the Trinidad Tobago Olympic team in Munich, Germany in 1972 um, and also representing my country, Trinidad and Tobago, at several national meets um, while being on the team. But one of my greatest highlights I will always remember is the, the second Martin Luther King Games in Atlanta, Georgia, where we were the first university to be invited to such a meet and the quartet of Joe Sincere, Rufus Nesbitt, Daniel Buffington, Danny Sutton, and myself finished third behind the US number one and number two teams. And it's a record that stands up to this day. And I feel very pleased to have been a member of that quartet and representing Gramlin State University at that meet. So again, I feel blessed being a member, to become a member, I should say, of the Big Four at Gramlin State University. Thank you, Commissioner McClendon, and the committee for bestowing this honor upon me. Once again, thank you. Cynthia Cooper Dyke, the definition of leadership and winning Cooper Dyke makes an impact no matter her destination or arena. In 1997, she joined the Houston Comets of the WNBA, 
where she led the Comets to four consecutive WNBA championships, being named the Finals MVP each time, and was a four-time All-Star before retiring in 2000. In May 2005, she joined the Prairie View A&M women's basketball program as the head coach, where the Lady Panthers won their first SWAC regular season title, SWAC tournament title, and NCAA tournament berth in 2006-2007, while collecting Conference Coach of the Year honors. She was inducted into the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame in 2009 and the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame in 2010. A true champion and model of performing excellence, Ms. Cynthia Cooper Dyke. I am so thrilled and honored to be uh, a part of this, the SWAC Hall of Fame. And I want to thank Prairie View a and for nominating me and the SWAC committee for um, you know, voting me in. And Dr. McClellan, you know you're my guy, so I really appreciate everything that you're doing, not just for this Hall of Fame ceremony, but for the SWAC in general. Dr. Dennis Thomas, Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference Commissioner, a legacy that has impacted countless individuals Thomas has excelled in all aspects of life along with breaking barriers that have changed the course of history for black college athletics. Thomas dominated at the offensive line position at Alcorn State University. Under coach Marino, the Godfather Chasm, he was part of the 1970 SWAC championship team and was a two-time Pittsburgh Courier All-American. In 1973, he surpassed the legendary Walter Payton for the SWAC offensive most valuable player making it the first and only time an offensive lineman had been awarded the honor. After his playing career, Dennis returned to his alma mater and became the youngest defensive coordinator in the league, and later served a short stint as head coach at South Carolina State University. Thomas really caught his stride as an administrator, serving as the athletic director at Hampton University, where the teams he supervised accomplished 17 CIAA Division II championships between 1990 and 1995, as well as 11 MEAC Division I championships between 1996 and 2002. Thomas then became commissioner of the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference in 2002, changing the scope of the MEAC for the foreseeable future. Thomas was key in the negotiations to televise MEAC games to the ESPN platform. He also recommended his vision for what is now the Celebration Bowl. Thomas was instrumental in creating the MEAC SWAC Challenge that has been on ESPN for 16 consecutive years. And in 2015, he brokered a multi-million dollar deal with Nike for MEAC institutions. A true trailblazer and a legacy filled with success, Dr. Dennis Thomas. Well, I'm very pleased that the commissioner of the SWAC, uh, Charles McClellan, I would like to also thank the committee that select the uh, uh, Lifetime Achievement Award for selecting me. Uh, I am a product of the SWAC. And I played at Alcorn State, I coached at Alcorn State. And so uh, it gives me great pleasure to, to receive uh, this award. Ernest Holmes. Toughness and greatness personified. Holmes represented Texas Southern and the SWAC like a true champion. As a defensive tackle at Texas Southern University, Holmes dominated, which led to his six seasons with the Pittsburgh Steelers and one season with the New England Patriots. He was inducted into Texas Southern University's Hall of Fame in 2006. The late owner of the Steelers, Dan Rooney, said, Holmes is one of the toughest players to ever wear a Steelers uniform. Holmes is a two-time Super Bowl champion and led the team with 40 sacks and was selected for the NFL Second Team All-Pro in 1974. Forever a legend, Mr. Ernest Holmes. We are extremely excited that my dad is being inducted as part of the 2021 SWAC Hall of Fame class. Being part of a SWAC championship team, uh, co-champions in 1968, and of course, being part of the uh, two-time Super Bowl winning Pittsburgh Steelers and original member of the Steel Curtain. On behalf of the family of Ernie, late Ernie Holmes, I'd like to thank 
Commissioner Dr. McClellan. We'd like to thank the SWAC Hall of Fame Committee and the Athletic Department of Texas Southern, uh, in particular, uh, Kevin Granger, and for bestowing us with this honor. Uh, it was indeed an honor. My family and I are very happy that our father, my father, <laughs> is part of the 2021 Hall of Fame class. Marcus L. Mann, dominating on the court and in the classroom. Mann has many accomplishments that have shaped him into the leader in the community he is today. Mann signed a full athletic scholarship to Mississippi Valley State University and was the first student athlete to graduate magna cum laude in 1996. He averaged 19.3 points and 12.7 rebounds per game. The Delta Devils earned SWAC men's basketball regular season champions, SWAC tournament champions, and appeared in the NCAA Division I tournament. His rebounding ability helped him lead the NCAA Division I in rebounds, earning SWAC Player of the Year, the first in MBSU's history. Mann was later inducted into the MBSU's Hall of Fame. He would go on to be selected by the Golden State Warriors in the second round as the 40th overall pick in the NBA draft in 1996. Mann later discovered his true calling and ministry. He is currently the pastor at First Baptist Church of Carthage, Mississippi and chaplain of Tyson Foods. A leader on the court and in the community, Mr. Marcus L. Mann. I'm humbled uh, yet excited to be selected to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Uh, something I worked towards when I was in uh, college at Mississippi Valley and now to be recognized as one of the uh, elite players in the conference um, is exciting and again yet humbling. I want to thank uh, Commissioner McClellan, the SWAC Hall of Fame Committee who bestowed this honor upon me along with my family, uh, my teammates, uh, Mississippi Valley State University, uh, president, staff, most of all, again, I give all praises and all honor to God who gave me the gift to play this sport called basketball. Melvin P. Lee, courage, greatness, and impact. Three words that describe Lee's legacy and how he represented Grambling and the SWAC. An undersized center and linebacker, Lee led the Tigers to an undefeated season where they won the program's first black college football national championship in 1955. He earned a pair of Midwestern Conference honors between 1952 and 55. Under legendary head coach Eddie Robinson, Lee served as an offensive coordinator and an offensive line coach from 1960 to 1997. In 2010, Lee was inducted into the Grambling Legends Hall of Fame. The Melvin Lee Award was initiated in 2016 by the head football coach, Broderick Fobbs. Experience, exceptional, extraordinary. The late, great Mr. Melvin P. Lee. I view this honor as a tribute to a legend. He would be extremely proud of this moment. Grambling State University recently celebrated 120 years of tradition, service, and excellence. Melvin's service to the university covered a period of 41 years, which makes him a part of this great celebration. I'd like to share a quote that Coach Robinson made that says a lot about Melvin's uh, career. It was the genius that helped make our wing T offense so effective and for so long. And he also stated, and I quote, it would be impossible to describe how much Melvin Lee meant to me over these years. I think those two quotes from the late Eddie G. Robinson say so much about the man, Melvin Lee. Thank you, Commissioner Mike Cleveland, the 2021 Swike Hall of Fame Committee for bestowing Melvin Lee with such an honor. I am very proud and happy to be a recipient on his behalf.
Robert Rob J. Jewett. The voice of Jackson, Mississippi in SWAC Sports carries a long legacy in broadcasting, contributing for over 30 years. Jewett was born and raised in Jackson, Mississippi, where he attended and graduated from Jackson State University in 1985 with a bachelor's degree in mass communications. He is well known for his talents on numerous radio and television broadcasts. Jewett has also appeared in the movie A Time to Kill as a reporter. Jewett is a member of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, Big Brothers Big Sisters, Mississippi Sports Hall of Fame contributor, and is currently the executive producer of sports broadcasting for his alma mater, covering SWAC sports for over 30 years. A broadcaster's dream legacy, Mr. Robert Rob J. Jewett. This is the biggest honor that I've ever had in my life. I mean, to be in a, a place that's with Walter Payton and Jerry Rice and, and um, all of these prestigious people, for me to be in the same Hall of Fame as that, it's incredible, it's unbelievable. I didn't get into this business to do this and uh, to be honored in such a way is, is amazing. My fondest memory was traveling to, uh, I started doing Alabama State basketball games and traveling to Montgomery, Alabama and then driving back that same night uh, things like that and uh, going to Grambling and, and, and watching Coach Eddie Robinson, watching all of these great coaches, it, just meeting all the SWAT coaches and, and the great players, those are my memories. I just want to thank uh, SWAT Commissioner Dr. Charles McClellan for his support and I want to thank the 2021 SWAT Hall of Fame Committee for voting me. Um, not many uh, non-athlete coaches are voted into the SWAC Hall of Fame, so this is very, very special to me, and I certainly, certainly want to thank you for bestowing this honor unto me. Thank you. Willie Ray, an accomplished individual at every level. Ray was part of the championship team winning the SWAC title and Black National Championship in 1969. He earned first team all swack as a punter, along with being named an All-National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics NAIA punter with the best punting average of 43.6 yards per punt. Ray graduated from Alcorn State in 1970. After college, Ray held many distinctions. He served as the head coach for the boys and girls track and field team from 1971 to 1972. An Oscar Martin Memorial Trophy Award recipient in 1971 Alabama State Champion Track and Field Junior High Boys Title 1972, Alabama State Junior High Boys Championship 1978, and Birmingham City Schools Boys and Girls Track and Field Coach of the Year 1989. Ray also received a Professionals Community Honors Award and recognition in Alcorn State's Hall of Fame in 2007. Ray served his community well as an assistant principal position before retiring at Inslee High School in 2006. Driven. Accomplished, successful, Mr. Willie Ray. I want to thank you guys so much for being here to share this special occasion. And my heart is so full of joy. The Orange Blossom Classic was a very, very special game for us. And uh, Florida and them were selected to win that classic. To be honest with you, we were sitting there, I mean, we little green guys, you know, we're from the country. We, we were shaking. We were nervous. We had never played in front of six, eight thousand people before. But when that ball was kicked off, it was, a, it was a horse of a different color. You know, we played football that night. We did. We ended up winning the game, and I was also, I, I scored the first touchdown in that ball game. That was one of my fondest memories. I want to thank Commissioner McClellan and the 2021 SWAC Hall of Fame Committee for bestowing this honor on me and the blessings of the Lord, Jesus Christ. In 1920, an athletic league was formed and slowly became one of the leading sports associations in the world of collegiate athletics, the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Today, the SWAC is looking towards the next century, growing, supporting, and transforming our intercollegiate sports activities for student athletes and promoting academic excellence. Each SWAC member institution represents a high level of integrity and sportsmanship. We are the SWAC, building champions for life. Building champions for life didn't just happen overnight. Since 1920, the Southwestern Athletic Conference, SWAC, has been in the forefront in leadership and excellence in all our athletic programs. 
There are very few major sports halls of fame that a SWAC athlete is not a member. Hall of Fame coaches who were stewards and mentors to these elite athletes. Our tradition, our distinction, our legacy. We are the SWAC, building champions for life.